joy, rejoicing, and celebration will never cease in our habitation. We cannot thank God enough. And he has done all things well. He kept you to see this day. There is nothing you did to wake up. God woke you up by himself. He's the one that said good morning to you first. Some people must have drank volume 5, volume 10 to sleep. But there is no volume anything to wake up. I slept. I woke me up because the Lord sustained me. And if you are removed the sustaining hand, you have been somewhere else. But God forbid. That's why we're going to again appreciate him. We're going to give him glory. How many of us had those Catholic of testimonies again this morning? Cataract being healed by the hand of God. One of us passing the ICANN exam successfully with all the hitches. Today she's a chartered accountant. Miracle job. It's a well paid job. And also testimony from the male healing and all that. For these and many more, we need to give God thanks. The testimony that are not shared are more than the ones that are shared. Lift your voice again. Lift your hand. Let's appreciate him. Let's give the doer the glory due to him. The cord is not the doer. The caller is the doer. Faithful is he that called you who will also do it. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for life you're giving to us. Thank you for grace to see another day. Thank you for the beauty of your holiness. Thank you, Father. We glorify your name. We exalt you. We enthrone you. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you praise. You alone is worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we glorify you. Thank you for joining Moses, for soundness of life and peace, grace on every side. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify your name. Thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for. So blessed, our souls has found rest. Oh Lord, we give you thanks, Father. We give you thanks, thanks, thanks. Yes, we give you thanks, we give you thanks for. Questions of our heart be answered this morning. Meet everyone at the point of his or her need and let everyone return from this service with joy unspeakable. 
full of glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. So you be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Please help me walk around. Great one, two, three people around you. And congratulate them for making it again to this day. The Lord be with you. The Lord honor you. And the Lord will settle you. Hallelujah. Congratulations. You may please be seated in the presence of the Lord. The word of God to us this month is um, Thanksgiving is key to fulfillment of prophecy. And we'll be looking at, in our Sunday services this month, understanding the power of thanksgiving. So we're going to build up today, we're looking at part 2A in this first service, understanding the power of thanksgiving, part 2A. And kindly come with me to Luke 17, I'll read 15 to 18 as my text. Luke 17, 15 to 18. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Where there are not ten cleans, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Thanksgiving is a divine expectation. God always expects us to return with heart of gratitude, appreciation. And we must not fail to do this. When it's time for prayers, when it's time for petitions, supplications, we lift up our voice. If you get through that story again in verse 13, and the Bible said, and they lifted up their voices and said, they didn't, it wasn't a gentle thing. They lifted up their voices. When it's time for prayer, we lift up our voices. We want to shake heaven. We want to make sure heaven comes down. Mm. But when it's Thanksgiving, some people don't know you have to also lift up your voice. In verse 15, look at this man, a Samaritan. He wasn't born again, but he had understanding of divine protocol. And one of them, verse 15, when he saw he was healed, turn back with a loud voice and glorify God. In prayer, they lifted their voice. In thanksgiving, they lifted their voice. It was a, he lifted his voice. It was a loud thanksgiving. Not gentleman thanksgiving. I'm thanking God in my heart. Between me and God, I know what he has done. I don't need to tell anybody. I don't need to show it. No. With a loud voice. Open thanksgiving. Identify with God for what he has done. What is thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is acknowledging the help, the mercy, the favor, the grace of God in making things work for you and for things to work well. Thanksgiving is acknowledging the help, the mercy, the favor, the grace of God in making things work for you and for things to work well. Now, you can't make things to work for you by yourself. Thank God for your efforts. But if it doesn't count your effort with his grace, it will end in disgrace. It's not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. It's of the Lord that showed mercy. If God didn't help you, you can't receive help. So we can't thank him enough. Hear this. You can thank God for what he has done and you can thank him also to make things happen. And that's where thanksgiving for fulfillment of prophecy comes in. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God to live. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He never saw the child that was promised, but he kept glorifying God until the miracle happened. Now hear me. Every prophecy God has given, every word that has gone ahead of you this year, you are thinking, how many days to go? Will it see happen? I decree they will happen in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
If you think well, you cannot but see reasons to glorify God. If you can think well, you can think well. Chimle, chimle, oyo yo chimo. Chimle, chimle, oyo yo chimo. Ine mere mo de mo manaro, o de mo manaro, o de mo manaro, oyo yo chimo, chimo. Chimle, chimle, oyo yo chimo. Chimle, chimle, oyo yo chimo. Ine mere mo de mo manaro, o de mo manaro. Thanksgiving is a debt we owe God. I had a story one day. A 70 year old man was taken to the hospital. Because he couldn't pass urine normally. And he stayed in the hospital for some days by the help of doctors. He started first of all by helping him to remove the urine and then later he got well and he was able to pass urine normally. And they brought his bill to him and he looked at the bill. And he started crying. He wept so much that the doctor was concerned. Is it because of the bill? If the bill is too much, I want to reduce it for you. Don't cry. The man kept crying. He said, no, it's not because of the bill. I can pay the bill. But I'm just imagining. For 70 years, I've been urinating normally. And God didn't give me any bill. For just a few days here, look at the bill. <laughs> And some of us will be urinating normally like that. You will say, what has God done? <laughs> what has God done? You'll be eating and the food is digesting. You are not eating and it's throwing up. And you are saying, what God has God done? Nothing is working. Is that one not working? Please, we owe God thanksgiving. Is it okay? Let me tell you, nobody you owe God thanks. And today we are going to show him gratitude again. Now, thanksgiving actually pleases God. It pleases God. It's one of the things that pleases God. There are many things that please God. Thanksgiving is one of them. Psalm 69, 30 to 31. I will praise the name of God with a song, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. These also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that had horns and hooves. You go and slaughter cow for God, it will not please him as thanksgiving. Cook all the food in this place. Go and cook a load of rice. It will not please God. Ask thanksgiving. If you know this is what pleases your father, why can't you give it to him? Thank God for, for church. When we're in church, we feel like we're going to bed. The most important time is when you're outside, nobody. That time you sit at the edge of the bed, only you, and put your hand on your cheek like this. God, not my own pastor. What thing I do? You don't need that. You don't need that depression. You don't need that heaviness of heart. If you can, embrace Thanksgiving. As a lifestyle. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Now, do you know what I discovered? If you look well, if you say this side is not working, there's always a side that is working. And let me talk to some pastors here. Now, sometimes, as a pastor, you see, maybe people didn't come to church. Or you see, that day, maybe the newcomers is even more than when people full church. <laughs> or first timers. Or the income. If you look somewhere, somehow, you will see God working. Is somebody following me now? You say, I don't have... Yeah, it's, can you see? Christmas is just three days from now. I have not put any shoe. I have not put any cloth. God, why did you see you like this? Thank God. 
Anything can still happen. You don't, you don't need to buy clothes to own one. I don't buy clothes. I don't. As you see me, I don't buy clothes. And when they bring it, it's my size. <laughs> I don't buy. <laughs> so somebody can even on that the eve of Christmas, somebody can still bring clothes for you. So why are you killing yourself? I don't have what to eat. Many things we are bothering about, we don't need to bother about it. You can't just see my children, uh, my their mates. If your children are like your, their mates, you will cry. You, God forbid. There are some of their their, 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 their mates that are into drugs now. Some of them are, they are I mean, they are doing shooting, uh, kidnapping people, holding gun on the street, and they are calling their father's name. <laughs> are you getting what I'm talking about? Do you want them to be like that? Uh, so why is it they're not like their mates? <laughs> Glory to God. Thank God for where you are. Thank God for who you are. Thank God for the things He has done for you. If you look well, there are reasons to thank Him. And thanksgiving pleases God. Why murmuring and complaining displeases Him? In First Corinthians, uh, in First, um, in Numbers chapter eleven, the Bible said, "The murmur and complain, and this displeased God, and His wrath came upon them." If you want to attract the wrath of God in your life, just be ungrateful. Just be somebody that, and no matter what God does, what have you done? Because they regard not the work of His hand, neither the oppression of His hand. He said God will destroy them. He will not build them up. They didn't commit adultery. They didn't commit fornication. They didn't kill. Because they disregarded the work of God. What have you done? What, has, what is it? Can't you see the year has ended? What has 2019 brought? Eh? Like that's how 2018 ended. Ah, 2019 again. Anyway, 2020. Ah, no, it will happen like that. Don't allow God to be angry with you. You have enough reasons to bless His name. Hallelujah. You know one thing? Proverbs 16 7 says something. That when the ways of a man pleases the Lord, He will make even His enemies to be at peace with Him. So thanksgiving pleases God. When you please God with thanksgiving, God can fight your enemies and silence them on your, for you. He makes his enemies to be at peace with him. David, a man that was used to praise of God for 40 years, he never lost a battle. God was the one fighting for him. Seven times a day, he will go into the temple. Are you busier than David was the king? Seven times he will create time to go and praise God and thank him. Look at the Psalms of David. You will understand why you need to be grateful. Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul? Do I lift up my soul? Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul? Oh my God. I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over. That's Psalm 25, verse 1. That's the Psalm of David. Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul? Do I lift up my soul? Unto thee, O Lord. Unto thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul? Oh my God, I trust in you. <laughs> Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over. May your enemies not triumph over you. <laughs> May they never eat it. One minute. That's why one time God said, I'll punish David. David said, Look, God. Let me not fall into the hand of my enemies. God, because God said they will chase you. He said, don't try it. Let me fall into your hand because I know you're a merciful God. One minute is enough for them to cut off my head. <laughs> you think if God has given them one minute, you are finished. All the thing you are glorying. This way. Can you see my car, my house, my can you see how my children are doing? Oh, yeah. One minute. But God said no. They will not triumph over you. They will not triumph over you. Glory to God. So now we we'll give him thanks. So now we we'll give him praise. Hallelujah. Now the question now is why are we thanking God as a church? 
Why are we thanking God as a church? Throughout this month, it's been dedicated to thanksgiving and praise to God. Even in covenant hour, every time we come, it's praise to God. Why are we doing that? Number one, the continuous increase of this church is a proof of the hand of God of increase at work. And all the glory must go to him. If we must continue to experience increases. The continuous increase of this church is a proof of the hand of God, the God of increase, at work. And if we must give him all the glory back to him, if we want to see more increases. First Corinthians 3, 6. God is the principal factor for every increase in life. God is the principal factor. Thank God for your efforts. Thank God for your knowledge. Thank God for your strength. Thank God for your vitality. But you see, if God does not give you increase, it is a lot of continuum. Paul planted. Apollos water. But God gave the increase. So if you are planting and you are watering and he refused to bring the increase, what will you do? Will you take him to police? Or you carry God to police? Go and arrest him. Every increase is from God. So that's why we must keep giving him glory so that he will continue to increase us. Psalm 67, 5 to 7. Let the people praise thee and let all the people praise thee. Then the earth shall yield her increase. There seems to be an increase on the earth that will not come until your praise and thanksgiving is dropped. Then the earth will either increase. Even our God shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Do you want to continue to see increase in the work of your hand, in your business, in your career, in your family? From testimony to testimony. Then learn the attitude of thanksgiving and praise. Engage in it. Number two. Behind all the amazing supplies of material and financial resources in this church, Jehovah Jireh is behind it. And all the glory must go back to him to keep him supplied to us. Behind all the amazing supplies of materials, financial resources in this church, God is behind it. Jehovah Jireh is behind it. And all the glory must go back to him if we must continue to keep the supply line open. Haggai chapter 2, 3 to 9. He said, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do we see it now? It is not in your eyes in comparison to so of it as nothing. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, say the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, say the Lord, and work, for I am with you, say the Lord of hosts, according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt. So my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. For thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth. And the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, including your own. And I will fulfill, I will fill this house with glory, say the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, say the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, say the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, say the Lord of hosts. May you live here with the peace from this house. May you live here with the glory from this house. May you live here with the silver and the gold in the name of Jesus. Now hear me. I cause every root of poverty in the life of any member of this assembly. God said the silver is mine. The gold is mine. You know, so what are you what are, what are you troubling yourself? You think it's your own. No, he gave you as a caretaker to keep for him when he needs it. Glory to God. You know, some people think that it's their own. That's why they're holding to it. Any money you can't use to serve God, you'll end up serving it. Anything you can't serve God with, you'll end up serving it. 
One of the greatest tests God gives to man is a test to lay down. The ability to lay down. And the ability to lay down is what brings the ability to take up. Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. And I have the power to take it up again. When you put a seed in the ground, as it lies there, before you know it, it produces much more fruits. Glory to God. Until you learn this, you'll be struggling with your finances. I've told us here before, the difference between spiritual farming and natural farming as regards to prosperity is that in natural farming, if this altar is your farm, you can't move beyond here, the boundaries of this farm, to harvest. Do you understand? If you go this side to harvest, you achieve. But in spiritual farming, you can plant here and harvest there. That's what gives you power as a Christian. You, are, you don't know the power you have. Do you understand what, you understand what I said? Eh? So from everywhere in the world, you can be harvested. Come and ask some of us what I'm talking about. Do you understand? Eh? So whether you now, you, you give to pastor, for instance, or not, it doesn't matter if I know what to do. Whether you give me or not, it can never stop my blessing. If all the witches in this town gather and say, let Pastor Ken will not be blessed, you are wasting your time. Because it can come from anywhere and from everywhere. Do you understand that? That you have privilege to do is for you to be blessed. That's spiritual farming for you. Natural farming, you must, if it's naturally, ah, then some guy should have killed some of us. Do you understand? Because if the members say, I don't like you, I will not give to you, their hunger will kill you. But since it's spiritual, it can come from anywhere. From anywhere. If being your enemies, God can use them to bless you. <laughs> so you may hear. So understand. Understand. The power to lay down is what brings the power to, to pick up again. Because the saver is there's nothing you can give God that will make him greater or less. He has it already. It's even a God is mine. But if you say bring, and you bring, is to make you better. So may I hear. In Luke 22 verse 35, he said to, unto them, when I send you without pause or script and shoes, lack you anything, and they said nothing. When God is involved, whether you, there's money in your pocket or not, you are not a poor person. Because he can supply all your needs according to your riches in glory. Some people said something about my father, Bishop Oedebo, that is worth one fifty million dollars. He's a very rich pastor. <laughs> Papa said these people are joking, they don't know my words. And I was trying to find out what is the worth of this man. I want to hear it from his mouth, his words. Do you know his words? He said, I am worth Philippians 4:19. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Can you quantify such a person? Eh? Getting supply from heaven. Can you quantify the person? No. But how do we keep the supplies going day by day? How do you keep it? It's by giving thanks to God. The one you enjoy today, thank him for it. And then tomorrow on is guaranteed. And then you thank him. You keep going. And then you keep going. But today, you go to your shop and then maybe, or they give you a target, you didn't meet it today. You can meet it tomorrow. And you ask, God, can't you see? Where are you now? Eh? So if you are the person, I even sow seeds eh, towards this. Maybe it was the wrong motive. <laughs> I made you to sow it. God cannot fail, sir. God cannot fail. This covenant cannot fail. There is no climate that is stronger than the, than, than the covenant. It can't fail. He's the one that gave me the power to make words. Oh, Jesus. Look at it. It's power to get. Power to do what? Yes. Try and get that power. Power to get. Power to get. Did you hear that? Power to get. It's not power to walk. Power to get. Some people are working hard, pursuing money. Money won't come to them. Money is like wind, it will fly away. But there is power to get, sir. Power to get. The thing that you are looking for is coming to you. Power to get. Power to get. How I wish you can understand this. Deuteronomy 8 18. It is he that gives thee the power to get wet. The power to get. 
<laughs> it's not everyone that builds to get house. There are people they give them keys of houses. It's not everybody that sells to buy car. There are people they give them keys of cars. The, uh, the, the, the power to get, that's what you should be looking for. The power to get. When that power comes, you begin to get. Even when somebody says he doesn't like you, you will give to him. <laughs> I think that's what I'm talking about. And the people say, I will not give. God will look for somebody somewhere. Come and give to him. One day I was in Kaduna. Now hear this testimony. I have a specific amount I give every service. And that day I don't know what happened. I didn't have it to give. And service is, this is Saturday. Service is Sunday morning. I must have what to give. And I must give such so, so, so amount. Now. Somebody traveled from Kanu. That same Saturday. Let Kanu to travel to Kaduna to come and give me and it was exactly what I needed to give Sunday morning so it power to get and stay there power to get power to get power to get power to get may that power come to you in the name of Jesus when the power come how do you maintain it by thanksgiving and praise you begin to supply you keep giving to you keep giving to you. They keep giving to you. Find out. Some of us who have experienced what I'm talking about. When it's time to pay house rent, you may not have it. But before the thing being turned to shame, the money will come. When it's time to pay students school fees, you may not have it. You may not have it. But I'm telling you the truth. Somehow, somehow. You may not know how, but you will see the money comes. When we're talking about prosperity in the kingdom, it's not how much you have. It's not uh, because of some people are talking how much does he have in the bank. He may not have anything in the bank, but when the need comes, the supply is there. That is what we're talking about. Because some people are wondering, ah, I, don't have, I don't have the kind of money this man has. Do you know what is his account? It's not what we're talking about. It's the power to get. When you need it to get. May God give us understanding. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. None of us will lack. Amen. When you need it, the supplies will be there. Amen. They give you a target. God will help you to meet the deadline and the target. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Before any need arises, the supply will be waiting. You know, you know, my father calls it the gift of on time. The gift of what? On time. The gift of on time. Time will fail me. I will tell you testimony upon testimony. Testimony. When my children's school fees were 10,000, it's the same way. You don't understand? When they enter millions, the same way it comes. You don't have to wait. You know, that's God supplying your needs. That's what we're talking about. And you maintain it with gratitude. If you're not a grateful man, you close the door to the supply. So with me, I hear. Number three. We understand that we can only pray while only God can answer. So all the glory must go to the prayer answering God. You can pray, only pray, but you cannot answer it. How many of us can answer our prayers? You can't answer it. So all the glory for every prayer that is answered must get back to God. Psalm 65 by 5. By terrible things in righteousness will thou answer us, O God of our salvation, who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth, and of them that are far off upon the earth. How many of us have been answered by God here? If God has ever answered your prayer before, if he has not answered you, no problem, keep your hand down. But if God has ever answered your prayer, God bless you. Congratulations. <laughs> That time something seems as if if the day break, shame will come as there's no help somewhere. You didn't know you can pray all night. That day we prayed all night. Because if day breaks and no help comes, you know, there's shame coming. Did God not answer you or not? Yes. And do you know that's how to pray every day, but you refuse to pray. When things are working, you put your hand in your pocket. God, I hear the hallelujah. Glory to God. Sleep. Ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I told you a lie. What is pursuing you determines what how you run. If lion is pursuing you, you won't know when you jump fence. Mm. So there are certain things that come to you, even if you don't know how to pray before you pray. Some people maybe have never come to the altar to pray before. There are certain things that will pursue you. You come here and you need that and say, God, <laughs> if you don't help me, I'm, 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 I'm. In such situation, you say, God, intervene. God, intervene. So anytime God answers your prayer, we must return back to him with gratitude because you are not the one that answered the prayer. Jeremiah 3 verse 3, he said, Call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show you great and mighty things you know nothing about. In prayer, there are two things. Number one is intervention. Number two is revelation. Because some people now are asking if God has answered you before. If God can answer you by revelation, showing you what to do. And you do it and you come out of the problem. Do you understand? It's part of the answers. It can also be direct intervention. God doing what you ask. So there is intervention, part of the answers. Call upon me and I will answer you. That is intervention. And I will show you great and mighty things you know not about. That is revelation. Mature believers look for revelation. And when you get revelation, you don't go for the tongue match. When you get intervention, sometimes the thing may come back, you may have to go back for that prayer. So look for more of revelation in prayer. Than even intervention. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Mature people go, What will you want me to do? Immediately, Paul was converted. What will you want me to do? When God shows you that one, you have, you have reduced your prayer points. <laughs> you have reduced your prayer points. When you know what to do to the men hazy, will you be asking God, Hear me? When you know what to do to receive supernatural supplies, you won't be praying, God, uh, give me to God, give me no. You already know the button to press. Glory to God. God will show you great and mighty things you know nothing about. But we have seen answers here. One of us stood here about three testimonies since after Shiloh we have had on this altar. Essay is turning to AA in this church. How many of us have had that? Three. About three of them since after Shiloh we have had here on this altar. Not eleven so. Essay is turning to AA. Is that not answer? That's why we are giving him glory to him. Today now we have somebody came for prayer. You have to meet pastor. Pray for my father. But he's going for cataract operation. He went there. They say no more cataracts. Is that not answer? Uh, you don't know what it is. Go and find out how much they used to do cataract operation. That God solved that one free of charge. Have somebody here today sharing testimony of I can success. Becoming uh, no, a chartered accountant. Her level has changed. Somebody one day came here and shared testimony. He said, You came for operation push. <laughs> and then push. And then the husband did some transaction and certain things came in. And then the husband pushed the car to her. Is that not answer to prayer? And she came here to share testimony. God will give you answer to your prayers. Now hear me. I don't know the prayers you have prayed this year. That it seems the answers are perfect. December 31st will not come until the answer comes to you. Whatever answer you've been expecting from your prayers, I command them to be released in the name of Jesus. That's why we are praising him. That's why we are celebrating him. That's why we are thanking him. Because you can pray, but you can't answer it. Rise on your feet. Somebody doesn't want to rise, want to do it in the house of the Lord forever. Rise on your feet in the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay? Now we're going to pray in a short while and we're going to partake of the anointing and rejoice before the Lord. But I want to give opportunity here for everyone that is not born again. As 2032. Brethren, I commend you to God under the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Inheritance in this kingdom is for the sanctified, for the saved. Now somebody is here today, he said, Father, I want to receive my own inheritance. Nobody can give you an inheritance in a family where you are not a member of that family. Lord, I want to partake of the inheritance of the saints in life. Save me. Please, that is your hand cry this morning. Put your hand on your chest and let's pray this prayer of salvation. Somebody is here also. You gave your life to Jesus someday, but honestly between you and God, you are no more there because there's no joy in your life now, no peace to show that you are saved. 
why not return to him he will return to you draw near to him he will draw near to you you want to dedicate your life to him put your hand also on your chest and pray this prayer of salvation somebody is here also you are struggling with certain evil habits and you know it that these things have been a, a, a clog in the wheel of your progress and you want to say jesus i can't cross to 2020 like this help me save me deliver me from this and i am here for you you want to pray that prayer also of salvation please put your hand on your chest pray this prayer with me say lord jesus come into my heart be my lord be my savior i believe in my heart you are the only son of god you died and you resurrected on the third day today from my heart and with my mouth i confess you jesus as my lord and my savior write my name now in the book of life wash me clean with your precious blood i return to you jesus return to me thank you for saving me i am born again i am a child of god i'm a member of the household of god thank you for the inheritance of the saints in light in jesus glorious name please you pray that prayer with me wave your hand to jesus wherever you are somebody pray that prayer with me please wave your hand god bless you for your sincerity oh there are sincere people here god bless you god bless you please carry your bag your bible whatever you came to church with come to the front of that now please rush 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 come 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 to him you are good for him the way you are you are good for him the way you are come to him the way you are please come 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 lord i give you my life i give you my soul i live for you and go every step that i take Every moment I'm away. Please, we are coming. Come, 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 come to Jesus. 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 Oh Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Release upon me the spirit of gratitude. Let your spirit of gratitude come upon me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Lord, I give you glory. Let your spirit of gratitude come upon me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me to live a lifestyle of gratitude thank you jesus thank you ancient of days blessed be your name lord in jesus glorious name now we're going to go into the anointing uh proper and uh, then from there we go into a section of praise if you come with a bottle of olive oil bring it out now First Samuel 16 verse 13 and David was anointed with the whole of oil by Samuel in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. Thus in First Samuel 16 13 the spirit of the Lord came upon him by the anointing. And in verse 23 he showed to us he was an anointed singer. <laughs> As he began to play, play harp, evil spirits disappeared. They ran from Saul. Saul became well. Saul was refreshed. By this anointing, grace will come upon you. The spirits of God will come upon you. And as we begin to praise God today, no evil power will remain around you in the name of Jesus. You'll be refreshed and you'll be made whole in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this oil. We sanctify this material to be the holy anointing oil. Lord God of heaven, by this 
we decree the release of your spirit. We re release the spirit of joy, the spirit of gratitude in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit of praise come upon us and let whatever is hindering anyone's progress be shattered today. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' glorious name. Take a little by your right palm. If your neighbor doesn't have, give him a little of it. And put it upon your forehead and begin to decree what you want to see and experience. Father, I'm anointed today and I decree in the name of Jesus, the spirit of the Lord comes upon me. Every yoke of heaviness, every yoke. Now hear me. The joy that you are contacted here today will not leave you. You will never sweat before your enemies. My God will keep you and keep your generation in the name of Jesus. His plan and purpose for your life will stand in the name of Jesus. Every household witchcraft assigned against your destiny is silenced in the name of Jesus. Whatever been diverting your blessing will crush them in the name of Jesus. Your blessing will not come late to you. You will be an evidence of God's glory and honor in the name of Jesus. We are the rejecter that they will accept you. Whatever is standing as an opposition to your fulfillment of your destiny will cross them out of the way. Enjoy open doors. Hear me before that the force of this year rushes, your blessing will rush in. Any good thing can still share it between now and December. People that have forgotten you, they will remember you for good. Helpers of destiny will rise to help you. You shall not be stranded. You shall not be put to shame. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That shame will not come. In Jesus mighty name.